Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Geomatics Engineering and today we are going to cover the lecture 3 of the course PG Diploma in Geoinformatics. So today's topic of this lecture is going to be recent trends in geoinformatics. So we have already covered the two units of block 1 from introduction to geoinformatics and in today's lecture we are going to cover this unit 3 recent trends in geoinformatics. So what is going to be the learning outcome from this lecture? So we will discuss developments in the fields of remote sensing and we will also list out the advancement in photogrammetry, describe recent developments and trends in GIS and we will also understand the new policy initiatives and its brief to the benefits of private players. So what are the major trends these days in remote sensing technology? So first is to enhance data acquisition capability. As we know that the present day we have a very improvised spatial resolution data set in remote sensing in various wavelengths and various spectral bands. So we have increased our capability in data acquisition for different earth system parameters. And next trend is automated data interpretation. So we have developed also so much in AI and machine learning. With the help of that we have advancement in automated or semi-automated information extraction. We have enhanced accuracy in deriving information from remote sensing data. And we also have developed specific sensors that are based on specific applications. Like we have shifted from multi-purpose satellite missions to specialized sen sensors. Like for example the GRACE mission. The GRACE mission is used for the gravity field measurement and the JSON mission is used for the sea surface height measurement. So with these two examples, the GRACE and JSON, we know that for specific purpose, a specialized missions are launched in these days. And we have also done so many things in technological developments. Like there are continuous advancement in data acquisition and interpretation techniques. Accessibility and availability of remote sensing data is there due to computing technologies. And also development of algorithm for accurate information extraction with minimum human, minimal human intervention. And we are also having a different type of remote sensing sensors. There is also classification of remote sensing sensors. Like in optical sensors, we have photographic camera, MSS and microwave sensor. May we have SAR, radar, altimeter. And there are also passive and active type of sensors in both optical and microwave categories. And for data acquisition from Earth surface, we have used different type of sensors like panchromatic, multispectral, hyperspectral remote sensing techniques, differentiating between imaging camera and non-imaging radiometer sensors. So in present days, we have improved in these kind of technologies and improved in specific area like image acquisition, application based, so many of technological development, integration with AI and ML. Now we will talk about the optical remote sensing that how it is used in recent days what kind of sensors are there in optical remote sensing. So we have panchromatic imaging system that utilizes only a single channel detector across a broad wavelength range. So this panchromatic imaging sensors results only in black and white photograph. So this panchromatic imaging system is lacking from spectral information. So here are a few examples of satellites which provides panchromatic images like Cartosat, QuickBird, Worldview and GOI satellites. Then we also have a multispectral imaging system. So it employs multi-channel detector which can capture data across 3 to 7 spectral bands. And it also produces a multi-layered image containing both brightness and spectral information. So it is a colorful image, so it is having a brightness and a spectral information. So some example of satellites which can provide multispectral images like QuickBird, MSS, GUI MSS, Iconos MSS satellites and so many are there which can provide multispectral imaging system. Then we are also having a super spectral image system. So what is super spectral imaging system? So features numerous spectral channel which is having a greater than 10 spectral channels with narrower bandwidth than multispectral sensors so that falls within the super spectral imaging system category. So it enables captures of finer spectral characteristic of target. So example for super spectral imaging system is like includes MODIS and MERIS kind of satellites. So here is an example of a picture that is taken from super spectral imaging system. So it is an image of hurricane from a super spectral imaging system. Now we are 
also having a hyperspectral imaging system it is also known as imaging spectrometer so it can capture images across a hundred or more contiguous spectral bands this this line there was a question in gate exam related to hyperspectral imaging system where we have to find the correct sentence for hyperspectral imaging system so it is having a hundred or more contiguous spectral bands so it can provide precise spectral information for better characterization and identification of targets because it is having a huge number of spectral bands so it is widely applicable in fields like where precision agriculture and coastal management is needed it can also support detection and identification of minerals vegetations and man made materials and it was developed in mid 80s combines imaging and spectroscopy in a single system a satellite image high map is used for mapping of hyperspectral images so here is a graph from an hyperspectral imaging system which shows the spectral response of sandy soil and impervious rooftop so you can see that how in every band width it is showing a peak and depth at a very narrow interval so it can help you to identify the different kind of features within an image so there are many application which can take advantages of hyperspectral remote sensing like in case of atmosphere for water vapor cloud properties aerosol mapping in ecology hyperspectral remote sensing can be used in geology coastal water snow and ice biomass burning and for commercial purpose hyperspectral remote sensing can be used for what kind of applications these different kind of imaging sensors can be used so panchromatic can be used for mapping land cover urban planning multispectral can be used for agriculture monitoring environmental assessment superspectral can be used for oceanography atmospheric studies hyperspectral can be used for mineral exploration crop health assessment these are only few applications there are more applications that can be covered using these sensors i have mentioned only few applications and in hyper spectral remote sensing we have also advancement there are ongoing research for detecting and identifying various materials and composition using the hyper spectral images and it is widely used in geology for mineral mapping and it combines imaging and spectroscopy for generating large data set that requires advanced processing methods so now we have talked about all the four sensors that falls within the optical remote sensing now we have microwave remote sensing so microwave is also of two types passive microwave sensing and active microwave sensing so passive microwave sensing detects naturally emitted microwave energy within its field of view like it uses sunlight to map the earth surface features so it utilizes devices like microwave radiometer to respond to low levels of microwave energy and it is used for applications like in meteorology hydrology and oceanography and active active microwave sensor provides their own source of microwave radiation to illuminate the target if there is a satellite it provides own energy and then the reflected energy is captured in the sensor so it is divided into imaging and non imaging categories like in imaging sensor it includes radar for characterizing target and non imaging sensors includes altimeter and scattermeter where there is no image there are only values that provide information some example of active microwave sensors are like csat1 sir abc almaz1 ers12 envisat1 jers1 radar sat1 lidar so here is also a satellite image that is example of microwave remote sensing so it is a image of radar sat that is captured on 21st march 1996 so within the active microwave sensing if we talk about radar imaging like radar imaging utilizes radar technology to distinguish different features on the earth surface it can differentiate between various geological formation like limestone and sedimentary silt stone we have already seen the example of radar sat image in this slide this is a radar sat imagery and then the little information about sar that is synthetic aperture radar so it transmits microwave pulses toward the earth surface and then measures the microwave energy that is scattered back to the spacecraft it utilizes radar principle and time delay in back scattered signals to form images like how much time it takes to go and coming back to the sensor 
so this time delay helps to form images and it provides high resolution imaging capabilities for various applications now we will talk a little about thermal remote sensing we have already covered optical and microwave so i am only covering the definition kind of thing for these optical microwave thermal because i am just trying to show that what recent trends are there in geoinformatics we will cover in detail about these types in our further lecture videos so thermal remote sensing deals with the acquisition processing and interpretation of data that are primarily falls in thermal infrared region of electromagnetic spectrum so it measures radiation that is emitted from the surface like sun's energy that comes to earth and after some time like in the evening when the energy is emitted back after absorption some energy emits back from the earth that energy is recorded in thermal remote sensing so it is a complementary to optical and microwave remote sensing like it helps identify surface material and features like rock type soil moisture and geothermal anomalies so some advantages of thermal remote sensing like it can record variation in infrared radiation aiding in understanding environmental phenomena it extends observation to phenomena where minor temperature variation are significant so there is also some limitation of thermal remote sensing like it is expensive to acquire and process thermal data due to strict operational and technical parameters there is also challenges in calibration due to subtle temperature difference and unpredictable interaction with atmospheric moisture and it can only measure the very top layer of the water surface due to rapid attenuation or absorption of wavelengths especially in water so there is not a very much precision in this case now we'll talk little about lidar technology so lidar technology utilizes laser pulses to measure distance or properties of target so it is commonly used for terrain mapping vegetation analysis and urban planning it provides high resolution three dimensional data so there is also x y and z information it is wisely used remote sensing technique for measuring exact distance of earth surface so that it can help to map the terrain perfectly it gains accuracy with gps and it utilizes pulses of laser to calculate object distance from ground surface so it can generate accurately a 3d map so its components are scanner laser and gps receiver and photo detector and optics plays key roles in data collection and analysis using lidar so there are two types of lidar airborne lidar and terrestrial lidar so airborne lidar is like mounted on helicopters or drones for data collection and terrestrial lidar is installed on moving vehicles or tripods on earth surface airborne lidar send lights pulses to object of interest measures distance accurately and terrestrial lidar used for observing highways analyzing infrastructure and collecting point clouds from building so terrestrial is like the camera is on earth surface and airborne is like the camera is mounted on any helicopter or uav the sub categories in airborne lidar are topological lidar bathymetric lidar and in terrestrial lidar the sub categories are mobile lidar and static lidar now there is also a trend in geoinformatics uav unmanned aerial vehicle so it is a miniature aircraft without pilot on board it can be controlled from remote it consists of ground based controller and communication systems it is originally developed for military operations but now it is widely used for various non military applications like uh, nowadays in india it is widely used for villages mapping under the swamitva project so there are so many applications of UAV like it can be used in surveillance aerial photogrammetry on demand delivery crop monitoring community policing crime prevention infrastructure inventory so there are so many applications of UAV UAV can be also categorized based on weight engine type flight altitude and operational autonomy like if we classify it based on altitude so there are few types of UAV like handheld UAV it can fly up to 2000 feet altitude and cover only 2 kilometers range close UAV nato type UAV tactical type mail type hail type and hypersonic high speed UAV like it is the advanced UAV which can go up to 50000 feet altitude and cover over 200 km range area now we have also developed in some parts of photogrammetry so what are the recent trends in photogrammetry first we will talk about some overview of photogrammetry so there it is a technique for measurement using photograph it is a cost effective method for mapping large areas 
it can also capture elevation information from stereo pair of aerial photograph or satellite images so what are the phases of development in aerial photogrammetry so first it is stereo photogrammetry and analog stereo plotter then analytical photogrammetry then computer assisted photogrammetry and now it is digital photogrammetry the notable developments in photogrammetry are transition from analog to digital technique and now use of digital cameras and high end computers integration into gis database like after the capturing the aerial photographs and then mapping from that aerial photograph getting information from that and update the gis database and development of digital photogrammetry workstation there is also shuttle radar topography mission srtm that can produce topographic maps for 80% of earth's land surface that falls within the photogrammetry some advancements in photogrammetry are recording and analysis of data digitally new applications like stereo photogrammetry using high resolution satellite images it is having a lower cost and easier handling enabling wider use it can also provide precise 3d measurement and editing capabilities with digital workstation now we'll see the evolution of gis technology like what recent trends are there in gis technology so from mainframe computers to personal computers to mobile devices gis has reached it facilitates growth in gis uses and research so technological advancement in gis are like application of computer based technology for handling census data introduction to topological data structure map data analysis adoption of res relational database technology and spatial database management system and also standardization of data quality norms and accuracy standards and how gis is integrated with internet and web gis so there is also development of gis tools on the world wide web we have introduced the new internet protocols and it is easy to use interface and programming language there is emergence of web gis and open gis and there is also integration with gps and pda with gis so integration of gis and gps data supported by personal digital assistant pda so remote access to data and software for gis implementation is also there there is also expansion of gis applications for mapping and resource management to utilities market analysis and also for location based these services and there is increased penetration of gis into public sector and now gis is transitioned from system centric approach to service oriented approach now there is also 3d gis which is in trend so 3d gis was emerged approximately a decade ago but now it is integrated for 3d visualization into gis software like in image you can show how the buildings are visualized in a 3d way so we can see that easily the height of buildings and what obstacles are there from one location to another in air way 3d gis is also used for wildlife habitat analysis to hydrologic modeling where it enhances the visualization of features and spatial data so there are also ongoing research in 3d gis that focused on 3d structuring and topology in gis which shows the advancement in 3d gis technology and methodology then we also have a web gis technology so emergence of web mapping as a major trend in cartography so like transformation of cartography from exclusive companies to potentially every skilled individual so what are the challenges are there in web gis like the expensive geo data and technical complexity and there is a issue like data harmonization and missing standards that hinders the mainstream adoption so what are the integration and opportunities in web gis like we have a cheap and easy transfer of geo data across the internet that enables the integration of distributed data source so that it creates opportunity that extend beyond disjoint data storage with web mapping technologies so the basic concept of web gis is an author creates a gis server where he uploads geo data across the internet and then it can be used by gis users mobile users web users so there are two terms web mapping and web gis so web mapping focuses on technological aspect while web cartography encompasses theoretical aspect as well and web gis emphasizes analysis processing of project specific geo data and exploratory aspect so advantages of web map is like deliveries up to date information in real time because 
of its integration with world wide web low cost software and hardware infrastructure easy distribution of product updates it has a compatibility across browsers and operating system you just need to have a laptop and a browser with internet connectivity it has ability to combine distributed data source and also supports for personalization and collaborative mapping it also integrates with multimedia content then we also have a trend of location based services known as lbs so it is a convergence of wireless network internet gis and gps so due to rapid development in mobile and it fields wireless networks can also use the geospatial information so what are the application of lbs like in the health sector indoor object search entertainment work personal life location based services can be used like sir it services includes identifying location of people or object like there is also app find my phone where if you lost your phone you can find it using another phone you can also track your parcel track your vehicle like how the swiggy and zomato gives us the information we can track the delivery person so these are falls within the location based services like some examples of location based services discovering nearest banking cash machine or friends or employees like if on google map you can easily find the atms near me offices near me you can also track your parcel vehicle personalized weather services location based games are also there like in covid time we used to play ludo where from different cities people joins online and we used to play with them and while traveling from one location to another location we got then turn by turn navigation information we also receive alerts for traffic jams so mobile plays a crucial role in lbs so we also get advertisement delivering mobile coupons discount based on location like whenever uh, you go from one state to another state you receive notification like welcome to this zone so sms is the dominant technology for mobile advertisement and marketing campaigns so this is a mostly used gis trend nowadays in the market that is location based services and then we also have a mobile gis so what does mobile gis represent so it is a extension of gis technology into the mobile environment earlier we used to map the gis database in laptop only now this technology is also in mobile so that allows geographic data to be utilized in the field on mobile devices so in mobile gis we need to have a component like gnss that can provide us a precise location we need to have a rugged handheld computers like this device used for field data collection and visualization then we have a gis software that enables the management analysis and visualization of geographic data on mobile devices so what are the advantage of mobile gis over lbs so mobile gis allows us for creating maps of objects even when it's difficult to occupy the location physically and lbs relies on the presence of the user on their phone to obtain location information some application and benefits of mobile gis is like it enables resource managers and field workers to visualize and improve field based management tasks field workers can capture spatial data directly in the field and transmit it in real time to central database it is vital in emergency situation and natural disasters that provide emergency workers with up to date and accurate information for decision making so like in example there is an emergency situation like natural disaster mobile gis empowers emergency workers such as fire fighters with current and accurate information so that they can add that information in mobile gis and which helps us in decision making for crucial for decision making that is critical for saving lives and protecting the environment so mobile gis enhances the field based task by providing the real time access to geographic data improving its efficiency and adding decision making especially in emergency situation it can help us easily and so that people available in real world can make decisions and save the life then we have also a trend of enterprises gis so what is enterprises gis so enterprise gis is used within an organization so that allows multiple users to manage share utilize spatial data and related information for various purpose including data creation modification visualization analysis and dissemination so with the help of enterprises these all tasks can be managed together so it can support a large number of simultaneous transaction and it can also integrate with other enterprise system like sap and billing systems 
It has compliances with Open Geospatial Consortium standards for easier integration with other systems. There is a consistent display of data across desktop, web and mobile platforms and reusable functionality across different user interface. The application of enterprise GIS is like it can increase communication and collaboration. It is cost saving and increased ROI and it can also integrate with enterprises system so that other enterprises system so that we can efficiently manage resources and assets. So enterprises geodata base is used in different sectors like in police, emergency, finance, economy, transport, water, environment, building, public work and for planning. Like in enterprise database, we have different type of data from base map, cadastral buildings, roads, facilities of water, sewage, city planning, emergency facilities and environment is there and with the use of these data sets, we can map property tax, road facility, water facility management system, sewage facility, and also city planning system. Now there is also trend of GIS customization where organization seeks to enhance user friendliness and efficiency in web applications so that they can reduce project cycle time, minimize manual intervention and decrease human induced errors through automation. So custom built applications can be easily modified and reused across different projects. To get a customized GIS software, there is an integration of different kind of programming languages and tools. Like recently, Aranya is developed by CDAC for forest management in Assam. So Aranya utilizes open source tools like QGIS, Python, PYQT and C, C++ for wider dissemination. And Aranya offers various modules for forest management providing flexibility and analytical capabilities to forest managers and planners. So Aranya is a customized software that an organization seeks for a specific application. So they can also modify the tools according to their need. So there is a term citizen science that is also used for collecting data and then integrate it within the GIS database. So citizen science is basically used in disaster management where people go in different areas and create a questionnaire and ask the local communities to get the information like in the case of a study area Adhya river in Chennai so researchers gathered at that area with a questionnaire and asked the different type of questions like what was the height of flood at the time of flood at what extent it was there how much area is affected so there they used to collect the information from local people and they also shows some handheld information like they show the satellite images to local people and tell them to identify the area at what extent the flood was there so local community also participates and provide the information to complete the questionnaire and with the help of these information the questionnaire gets to filled and then it integrates within the gis so that is known as citizen science where we used to collect the data from local communities where a natural disaster is happened so some policy in it initiatives are also there from government of india like government of india has approved a new geospatial data policy that aims to ease access restriction for private companies this policy covers various type of geospatial data that includes a natural and man-made feature satellite imagery and local information this policy benefits various sectors of the economy by providing accurate and constantly updated geospatial so indian entities will have unrestricted access to certain type of data and services that promotes the growth of the Indian geospatial sector and aiding in improved planning and resource management. The government has also clarified a standard for political maps. So this, they say that the maps that are published by Survey of India that should be the considered standard. The Indian geospatial economy is projected to grow significantly by 2025 that driven by emerging technologies and increasing use of geospatial data in various sectors. So five key initiatives are highlighted as driving factor for geospatial technology so guideline for geospatial data 2021 drone rules 2021 that is already implemented space-based remote sensing policy of india that is under consultation national geospatial policy and satellite navigation policy so defense and intelligence urban development and utilities were major contributors to geospatial market 
in 2021 that is collectively accounting for over 37% of market with transportation and building infrastructure it also contributes in geospatial field so these are some policies that are taken by government of india to improve the geospatial market and geospatial economy so we have finished the lecture of recent trends in geopolitics now let's talk about the summary that what we have learned from this lecture see we got to know about that how remote sensing sensors are broadly covered into optical hyperspectral microwave and thermal sensors and how it is used for various kind of gis mapping and analysis and the gis is also advanced from day to day utility to 3d gis web gis mobile gis lbs enterprises gis and gis customization further we have also learned about how lidar and drones are carefully blended with the recent applications and in recent years citizen science is gaining more popularity where in public or community participation greatly helps in resolving major challenges being faced by humanity last indian geospatial policy has come to the support of indian companies to get full benefit of access to the geospatial data so this is the summary of recent trends in geoinformatics and i hope you liked this video if you are having any queries please let me know in the comment section thank you very much